saw that. <laughs> I know my videographer's gonna keep. together got the board on the back you can see those screwed in I use some one inch screws um, the hex heads torque heads they worked um, they went through they held everything but I went through with I think they were inch and three-quarter like screws um, some eight pies and I just went through the back each board on each end just so a little bit more, there's a little bit more stability in them in the side pieces and everything since these are cut shorter and everything so people grab them, they don't shift around as much. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pre-stain this backing piece. Um, I had everything burned as well too, as you saw. Just kind of gives everything more of a depth look to it. I like it, it's cool. It doesn't work on everything I do, but the stuff like this I do, it works really awesome on when you have um, pieces on top of it, which I will talk about a little bit here quick. Um, but I'm gonna pre-stain, got the middle wax pre-stained, wood conditioner works good, doesn't get blotched when you stain. Um, but I'm just gonna do it on this piece for now. Um, but I'm gonna do also some golden pecan stain on this. It's not going to do much to it, but it's going to bring it out a little bit. It's going to make it pop a little more, and it's also going to make it just a hair more darker than a natural stain, which is good for this, because my plan is to go ahead and cut, um, for the lobe I'm doing on here, I'm going to go ahead and cut some, like, mountains in on, I got some three-quarter inch uh, birch boards, uh, like plywood, 
And they also have um, half inch and quarter inch boards. And I'm gonna kind of do a 3D look on it. I'm gonna do some mountains with some trees and stuff. And I'm gonna put their logo up here in the same birch. And I like birch a lot. Um, I got some Baltic birch plywood pieces and they work awesome because they're easy to cut and they look cool, they look beautiful. The, the grain detail is pretty sweet on them. And then once you stain them, I'm gonna do some stain on some of them and I'll probably do maybe their colors on the logo yet. I'm gonna think about that when we get going on this. When I'm doing these kind of things, I never really have a plan of a final product. I kind of go, as I'm going, I kind of plan as I go and I kind of see how things look. Cause I don't wanna do a full mock-up of something on a paper and have this idea in my head and then when it gets to the end and it doesn't look good well you start changing things up and everything so i just rather do it as i go because i think the end product is going to look a lot better afterwards than if i plan everything out and whatnot but oh uh, yeah so i'm going to go ahead and stain this and do all that cut some boards cut out my designs and stuff and uh yeah we'll keep going on it stain all on the board and uh, as you can see it already got a little darker um, it will dry up I'm gonna let it sit for I don't know probably 20 minutes or so just let it kind of soak in um, it will get a little lighter after that but uh, it already kind of pops out a little bit so I'm gonna let that sit for 20 so minutes and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put on um, this golden pecan stain. It's from Barathane. And I like I like Barathane stains a lot. Um, they're not as gunky as some of the stains are. That's a good way to describe a word to describe them. But this is like a really it goes on really smooth. A little goes a long ways. Um, and I really do like the contrast that's with these Barathane stains. Um, I think it's just yeah, it's just a normal wood stain. Um, but it does the job really well. I've loved them, using them for a long time. Um, yeah, the colors are nice, the schemes. And I'm gonna do the golden pecan on the back of this backing plate. And um, I'm gonna do the 3D pieces I'm gonna cut out. I'm gonna probably do those, some darker stains, probably some walnuts, some dark black cherry, maybe some light cherry, maybe a natural. Um, we're kind of going to see as we go, I guess, kind of um, what I'm going to do. But yeah, I'll be right back. The sit, and we're going to put the stain on. Okay, I got the golden con stain on the board and I like the way it looks so far. I'm not gonna put a second coat on because um, I feel like with this piece, I don't need it. I don't usually put second coats on unless I really want to darken something up more, but I think there's gonna be enough um, with the burning and everything. There's gonna be enough darkness on this board already with the other cut out 3D pieces of different stains and stuff and different um, variations of light shades and dark shades so um, I'm gonna leave it like this uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw out my design and make some stencils um, and we'll be back Yes, I can be. Uh, uh, uh. 
see, I got the mountains and the trees cut out. Um, to do that, I made stencils by hand. Don't have a projector or anything like that. Um, I literally just took pieces of paper, um, taped them together with the masking tape, traced them out, cut them out with the scissors, and you get something roughly of this for the trees and whatnot. Mountains. Fairly simple, anyone can do it really. It just takes a little time, but um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and stain these. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with their logo yet. I'm gonna kind of think of that. Um, but for the time being, I'm gonna kind of sand these down a little bit more better and stain them, figure out what shade of stain I'm gonna use and whatnot, and uh, we'll look, see how it goes after that. So. Okay, so I got all these pieces stained with the different shades and the different variations of stains. And I really like how it looks. I don't know if it's easy for you to see with the light hitting it with the sun. Um, but I like how it looks with the darker stain up front going to the lighter stains in the back. Just adds a little depth to it. Um, we'll let it sit overnight. I'll think about the logo and what to do for that yet. But uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow and see how this thing finishes up. Okay, I got the mountains and the tree pieces all glued together. As you can see, it's kind of a crazy clamp set up here, but it works and that's the main purpose. I use Titebond 2 Premium Wood Glue. Love the stuff, it's strong, it works great. But I did go ahead just for safety. I went and put one inch screws to the back of this just to ensure that it holds a little better because you never know when you're delivering stuff like this or shipping it. Stuff can shift around and break, um, come unglued. So I just did some one inch screws in the back of that. Um, I also did get part of the logo for the words cut out. And the other logo too. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna paint these. I think it's gonna look cool with some distressed paint on them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, check back in with you guys. I'm gonna let these sit overnight and dry, come back tomorrow, sand them down, and give them a distressed look. And what I might do, sometimes I like to take some darker stain and put it on a brush or a rag and wipe it along the edges more or so. And it gives a kind of a darker tone to it. But we're gonna try that out tomorrow and see how it goes. I think it's gonna look really cool. Okay, so all I'm doing here is really just lightly sanding down the blue paint. Um, it doesn't matter what grit you use necessarily as long as you just go from the heavier grit to the lighter grit um, throughout the sanding process. And you're going to want to do a little bit more around the edges uh, just because that's where wear usually happens more, more often. But the goal for this isn't to get it super distressed and super aged. I just want it lightly roughed up. I want it to match the, the burn and the other pieces of the board because if you do too much on this one, it's gonna look out of place, I feel, because um, nothing else on this board is really distressed, it's more so just burned. So I think it's gonna look cool with a slight age to it on top of everything. And you also gotta remember, I'm gonna be doing the lettering on this too, which I will show you guys um, later on. But, so I'm gonna rough it up first, put the lettering on next, 
and it'll sit a little better. You'll, you'll be able to read it more and it'll pop a little nicer for you guys. As you can see, I am getting the letters put on here with the white paint. Uh, nothing too fancy for paint, it's just white acrylic paint. Got a little bit of water in here just to kind of uh, thin it down a little bit so it's easier to spread. Goes a little farther. Um, you might think to yourself, why am I doing this backwards? Well, when you paint left-handed, you have to, otherwise you will be smearing everything that you were painting. Um, but yeah, so far it looks like I'm gonna have to put maybe two to three coats of the white with the lettering on here just so it kind of pops more. This I painted already white. I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm probably just gonna sand it down a little bit. Um, I would like that harder distressed look on it too. So I think it's gonna pop really nice with this. Okay, I'm getting my second coat of varnish on. I just got done with the mountain pieces and now I'm doing it on this backing piece. Um, I like to use the semi-gloss varnish. I feel like satin just makes it too, a little too dull and full gloss makes it look a little too glassy in my opinion, it's just my taste. Um, to me, the, the semi-gloss really brings out the details and the depth of the wood and it doesn't sacrifice, you know, the glare of the sun and whatnot. Um, and it still has a nice sheen to it, which is what I love to see. So when you put on these mountain pieces and the logos, when you look up close, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see some reflections and whatnot, which is really cool. And also really brings out the grain of the wood, which I really like. I use Minwax. Um, you don't have to really anything for a varnish works, but uh, yeah, I love Minwax, and it's done a phenomenal job for me throughout the past, and I just kept using it, so keep finishing the varnish here, and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, I got the logos all done, painted up, and glued together, and I did go through and I added a black kind of shadow outline on the lettering just so it kind of sticks out a little more on the piece. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear coat these with some spray, aerosol can clear coats, just use Rust-Oleum. Um, so I'm going to use a glossy finish, that way these really stick out on top. And uh, we'll be back and we'll put it all together and we'll see the finished product when we're all done.
Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below to see more tutorials. Also, be sure to go check out and favor my Etsy shop, Bomber's Reef. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching.